Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I have another treat from Steven. Uh, and one of the things that's interesting about this one, this is a compact Bonanza. It's a lower end uh, edition of the real. Uh, you're going to see it when we take it apart. There's not much going on here. There's no fancy bail trip mechanism. It's actually just one formed wire. And as it sets, it's going to come over and knock the side of the handle and, and flip it over. This reminds me of one of the first reels that I had uh, as a child. My, uh, my dad bought us, uh, us, my brother and I, uh, a, uh, a reel that looked very similar to this, although I can't for the life of me tell you what that reel was at this point in, in uh, memory, but it was an interesting one. Here's an interesting thing as well. This is one of the few times I've actually seen Omori on, stamped on the reel. Now, Omori made a lot of fishing reels for a lot of different brands. In this case, it actually stamped right in the bottom, made in Japan. So, we're going to take this reel apart. I'll show you how it's made. We've got an issue. Stephen tells me that there's no drag in this one. So, we'll go ahead and see what we can do to restore the drag there. And uh, just learn that regardless of how complicated or uncomplicated a reel is, it still needs service in order to have it work properly. So we're going to service this reel. I don't expect to find that there's going to be much of anything going on in the reel. And uh, we'll get it back to him to, to take fishing or to put on his, his uh, mantle or whatever he would like to do with it. It's a clean reel. It's in good condition. And uh, no reason why it shouldn't go fishing. This would make an excellent pond reel. And uh, there's no reason why you can't catch fish with it. I know that the similarly styled reel that my dad bought for me certainly caught a lot of fish in the back in the day, if you will. And so it doesn't have to be complicated to to make it work properly. All right, well, those four side plate screws I put into my parts tray along with the handle, and I noticed that all of those screws are the same, so it doesn't matter where they go back in the sequencing. All right. Let's take this off next. I'm not sure if we have to remove the rotor first. We may have to. Okay, well, there's a, an indication. It's, it's missing a drag washer for sure. There's no uh, hump or extension on this button, and the stack of washers is below the uh, spool height, so there would be no way to, to make that work. All right, we're going to pull these, the click ratchet and the spool height adjuster off. And there's a small nut on this one. It looks like a 9 or a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the right one. Ha, <laughs> good guess. I always keep a set of sockets nearby. That's because, well, generally speaking, you'll find yourself working on a reel like this that um, uh, has a deep cup and you cannot get a wrench like this in there to take it out. So you're going to need to use a socket. Well, as I just tried to do the traditional uh, turn left to loosen, well, it doesn't loosen, it tightened it. So this is a reverse threaded nut. It comes off in a clockwise manner. Take the nut off, that goes into my parts tray, and now we should be able to remove the rotor. And I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, this rotor is screwed on as well. And we just have a tight uh, washer holding it on for us. Rotor, rotor washer, and now we have a little cup underneath it. So that's the top side of it. And the reason I needed to do that was this cup that was underneath here was holding that case. So you couldn't remove the case without uh, removing the other pieces. I'm going to put all of those to the side for a moment. Out comes the case. Very simple design. We have a bushing we have a pin that's going to be driving the uh, oscillation gear, which is the inner cup of the main gear. And all of this just kind of sits in place. Let's go ahead and just take some of these pieces off here. We have a pin. And that will enable us to do our, our house cleaning here. Take that off. This clean the inside of the case. I'm just using a paper towel. Notice that the other side that belongs on that pin is actually sitting back here. So don't lose that little piece. We'll uh, get to that in just a moment. And then we have this little washer. I'm going to 
the leaf goes on the top. I'm going to have to find that out, right? I should have paid more attention. Probably goes on the bottom. It's going to go on the top. Just, we just found that out from the, the stud side. All right. That goes on. The bushing goes on. The axle shaft. shafting from the top. It's easier. I was running into a little bit of a difficulty there. We'll uh, grab our grease and our grease brush. I use pen precision real grease for this. Slide it down, get a little bit of grease up top. Don't over grease this. It's going to be pressed out if you do. That assembly can come up now. Sit that off to the side. Put the pin half in on this. As I mentioned, there's a little bushing that's going to ride with that second part of the pin. I'm going to put that on my pointer, my hole, my pin, my call it what you will. Clean out the rest of this case. Grab that grease brush one more time. Grease the slot where that bush is going to be. Grease the slot where that little piece is going to ride. And down below. Now we can take our oscillation mechanism. Let's go ahead and put that through. And let's grab this other side. Put that on as well. So we've got both sides sitting now. Load that up into the piece. That's how that goes. This goes up top. I'm going to check the gap there. says it goes below. Let's try this again. There you go. That makes sense now. All right. Now we got it. Let's go back and grab those two little brass bushings. So even though they're simple reels, if you're working on them for the first time, well, you might be met with some challenges. And uh, what I always say when you're working on a reel that you don't know about is take pictures. And in this case, I'm taking pictures. And I hope, uh, hope you do too. The pictures I'm doing, of course, is a video, but uh, you don't have to take the video. You can use other picture takers, but by all means, please take the picture. Well, this has got an interesting little click mechanism. It's very much like a damn quick reel. When it's out here in the off position, you'll notice it's buried inside the case. And as you turn it to the right to engage, well, it's a spring activated piece and it protrudes from the case. So I want to make sure that I tuck that back in the case before I clean and re-grease the back end of this gear. It's a good time to tell you if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave it on the comment section of this reel, it doesn't have to be about this reel, your question that is. And uh, if you leave the questions, I do try to answer them in the mornings before I'm kind of bogged down in the, the issues of the day in the shop. So leave those questions. Uh, if you're leaving them in the afternoon or the evening, expect something the next day in terms of a response. I don't, uh, don't generally answer questions at night. At night I generally post a video from the day and uh, not much more. All right, we're going to just go ahead and put that main gear in now. And one of the things we might want to do here is go ahead and put that handle on to hold that main gear in place as we complete the rest of the assembly. Now you can move that over to the click function. You can hear that kind of clicking in the background. Okay, and once you have it all set up, it looks like all we have to do then is put this on square. Like that. Take the cap. 
load that on. Now it's rotor time. There's a D, so find the square side of this case. So I can put that on. And there's the same thing that's going on here with that little washer. And I'm just going to start this knot. Remember it came off in a reverse thread, so it's going to tighten by turning it left. And I'm going to go back and put those side plate case screws on. I'm going to anchor all of that down. When I do these side plate screws, I do like to go kind of front back or high low. That keeps equal tension on the, the case itself. Fun little reel. You've seen an interesting design inside this one. And uh, they all have their merits. They're all worth taking apart and learning from. We're going to go try to solve that, uh, that drag stack issue too while we're at it. But overall, we've seen how the click mechanism is a little bit unusual. It's not the traditional anti-reverse dog in, in dog spring. It has more of a design in common with a damn quick reel. And uh, seen a little bit of great differentiation in the oscillation gear. And now we can uh, go ahead and see if we can't, can't tighten this up. Remember, it tightens to the left. With any luck now, this thing should perform well. Huh. Like a champ. We want to grab our click ratchet. That'll seat on there. And your spool adjuster washer goes next. Now let's figure out what's going on with the drag in this. Well, there is no drag, and as I mentioned, there's it seems like we're a little top heavy or bottom heavy on this one. So, those of you that have watched know that I have a magical little box of, of drag washers here. And I guess we could go two ways. Here's a felt washer. That probably fits. Yeah. Fits like a glove. But I think that that's going to be a little bit too... It's not going to be proud enough. So I'm looking next, right next to it there, I see a cork washer, which is going to be a hard washer. Right here, that's a little thicker. And that should do the trick. Let's see. Put the cork washer in. There's a tension washer that goes next. And they had built it up with this little metal washer, so let's use that first and foremost to see how we do. I don't know if you need that little washer, but it's not going to hurt it. Let's tighten this down. Well, you're inside the cap here, so I wouldn't worry. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we got to drag, Stephen. Let's make sure that that uh, click washer, uh, the anti-reverse works. It does. This one's off to the races. There you go. That's it. There's your uh, compact Bonanza reel made by Omori in Japan. I'm guessing it's, uh, well, I'm guessing from when uh, my dad bought me that wheel, late 60s or 70s, probably the late 60s, and uh, maybe even the early 60s. But regardless, nice little reel, it casts, as I mentioned, it's got what I call a bang bail on it. It's going to come over and hit this and trip. Very nice reel overall. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a little bit from that, and uh, I hope you have... Uh, Great days and fun taking the reels out after they've been serviced and taking them fishing, giving them a second chance. To everybody who's a first responder and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.